Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna have a look at some batteries, a charge controller and a tiny little inverter. I'm mostly gonna be talking. Um, there are all of these power stations and they are very popular right now and what they're really replacing is a setup like this. Uh, this is a very simple setup but nevertheless a setup. You have some battery capacity in this case, this is the Time USB batteries that was kindly gifted to me for reviewing in videos. And also we're gonna look at this charge controller, which is perfect for a, a tiny setup like this. And then I have a very cheaper uh, inverter here. And that was just because it was nice and small and I didn't have to mess around with anything big. So yeah, very tiny one, 150 watts. So uh, yeah, I think I got this when I was messing around with my uh, robot lawnmower and needed to charge something. And uh, this is a 12 volt modified uh, inverter, so it's it's not very good. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have this charge controller, and this charge controller is kind of cool because it does a lot of stuff. This one is a 40 amp one. And it doesn't really brag much about anything else. So I have I've done multiple videos on this one. It's the I believe it's called the Smart Tree Charge Controller. And I put it very nice in the box so that we could have a look at it. And this is not new for me. I've had it around for years and years. But for exactly this battery set up here. It's kind of a perfect charge controller because it can do all of it. If we look at the side here, we can read that this charge controller can do 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts and 48 volts, which is perfect for this setup because we have 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts and 48 volts if we use all of them. So I would be able to connect these batteries in any way that I wanted to, except, uh, well, maybe uh, 36 volts. If I did that, I would have a battery left over that I couldn't use for anything. But all the other ones, I would be able to use all the batteries. If I was doing 12 volt, I could just parallel all of these batteries. If I was doing 24 volts, I could serial two of them, two and two, and then parallel those two uh, 24 volt setups and 48 volts. This is just all of them in series. So perfect. And for a tiny setup, this is pretty smart. And this charge controller isn't especially stupid. It, it's pretty okay. So why would you want to make a setup like that when you can get a box like this? This is uh, the old Powers S2000. And this is an all-in-one unit and it can do, well, all of the stuff that uh, this setup with the charge controller and the inverter and the batteries and it can do all of it and in one little unit where you even get a nice display that tells you what's going on and stuff. Well, <laughs> first thing, <laughs> this is not cheap, I must admit. It's a rather expensive unit and this specific model is not expandable in any way. Well, you can expand the, uh, put more solar panels to it, but you can put in more capacity to it. And you can do that if you have the batteries loose. And that was why I asked Time USB for these batteries specifically, because I would be able to expand on this in a lot of different ways. So uh, these are 12 volt 50 amp hour batteries it says it all over the place on the batteries they uh, they do brag a lot about that so um if i was to 12 volts well i have four batteries here and i could get more batteries and then i could just parallel everything and i could start with this and i would be able to expand on this if i just needed a little bit i could get one extra battery if i needed a bit more i could get a bigger battery and i could parallel all of that and it would be fine 
if I was using a 24 wall system I could start with two of these and I would have 24 walls and that would be great and if I needed more I could get more and I'll just parallel another battery on top of that same thing with 48 volt I would just need all four batteries to do 48 volts but I would be able to expand on that with another battery and these batteries are pretty powerful we get 140 watt hours out of this that means that each of these batteries are 0.64 kilowatt hours it's pretty good you need a little bit more than two of these batteries uh, two and one quarter of a battery to beat the capacity in the old powers that I just showed you but at a fraction of the price so these batteries are about $200 each but the all powers is way over a thousand dollars so in pure capacity you get a lot more for your money if you get the batteries raw and you buy a, a charge controller maybe like this one this one is a day a thousand Danish crowns, 130 dollars ish and you can connect that and you can get the inverter of your choice and that's probably another 100 200 dollars depending on what quality you're going after and this one is like nothing it, you don't even you don't want this I can assure you I bought it and I regretted it but it's fine for showing here that that's that's what you can do so if you um, if you need a setup on the cheap that you can expand on and rebuild and do stuff with it's a benefit to have them in different parts and not having a unit that if you want to do anything with it well you have to replace the whole unit and at a thousand dollars plus plus well it's it's kind of a lot of money on the other hand if you don't want to mess around with cables and charge controllers and inverters i can perfectly understand if you want a unit where you just press the button and everything works so uh, yeah it's a it's a balance as always do you want the do you want the challenges or do you just need the product to work said it's really not difficult if we see the bottom of this i can do this without we have some connections here we have a temperature sensor i didn't bring that so um, but more or less it's a connector you put in here and there's a little thing that you connect on the battery and if that heats up too much it will shut off and not do anything then we have pv plus and pv minus those two holes are for connecting your solar panels and on the side of this one it says that you can connect 130 volt DC solar panels that means that your solar panels the voltage coming out of them needs to be below 130 volts and newer models of this it's 150 volts this one was a weird one next one is for connecting the batteries so you connect battery plus and minus and this box is pretty smart it figures out what batteries you're running so you can connect 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt or 48 volt and it will figure it out by itself and say oh we are running 24 volts, awesome I'll do that or we are running 36 volt, awesome I'll do that and uh, yeah everything is good it will figure that out you can also go in and tell it what battery types it's, it's looking at it can't see that itself but and you can go in and control the voltages of charging and discharging and safety and so on and so forth and um, it also has this communication port over here that can help you do that the load is where the wires can come out and the box can control the load and you might want to do that because this box isn't that stupid so if the batteries are getting very low it can shut off the load and say well now we don't have any more power it's not a good idea to discharge the batteries further the batteries will shut down themselves when they get that low but you might want the controller to do it ever so slightly before the batteries themselves shuts down so yeah there is that option uh, to have the box control that so here you connect your solar panels your batteries and your inverter that's the normal way to do that so the load output of the load will be the same voltage as the batteries 
So if you are running 12 volts, you will get 12 volts out. If you're running 48 volts, you will have 48 volts out. So I would not be able to take this inverter here and run it on a 48 volt system. That wouldn't work. This one is for 12 volt and I need to use it for 12 volt. So if I wanted to use this, I needed to take all the four batteries and put them in parallel and I would be good to go. So there is a big benefit of running all four batteries in parallel. And that is that if you're running them in parallel, they won't get out of balance at all. You will have the same 12 volt on all of the batteries. That doesn't work if you're running any of them in series. If we just connect these two in series, connect these two poles here and take the voltage out the ends here, we'll have 24 volts. But when I then charge it up with my uh, Smart Tree MPP solar controller, I don't control that the voltage is equal on the two batteries. I might be charging this one up to uh, 13 volts and this one only up to 12 volts and it might think, okay, we're good to go. The batteries will shut off if they're charged too much, but that means that if this one shuts off because it's charged too much, well, this one never gets charged. And when I start using them, this one will hit bottom first and this one will never hit bottom. So they will be more and more out of balance because next time this one will charge up better than that one and so on and so forth. So to fix that, it's a good idea to add something like this, a battery equalizer. This is rather expensive actually. I believe it's $40 or something like that now. Um, but it has output for four batteries. So for these four batteries, I can connect this equalizer and it doesn't mess with anything uh, other than the batteries. So it doesn't care about the charge controller, it doesn't care about the inverter or the solar panels. You connect this to, the, to all the batteries, plus and minus on all of them. And the only thing that this does is that it equalizes the voltage of the batteries. More or less, it takes the battery that is highest and it, um, it charges some capacitors inside of here and it pumps the power over in the lowest one and it does that pretty well. I have tested it in a video and I was, and I was very impressed of just how capable it is on uh, keeping batteries in balance even if there is a really bad battery in that uh, string of batteries. So yeah, uh, when I connect these batteries I will most definitely be using this um, battery equalizer to make sure that I don't make the same mistake as I did with my lead acid batteries where I messed up no less than six banks of four batteries. That's a total of 24 batteries. That was uh, <sighs> mostly because they were discharged too much for too long, but also because they were not in balance when I actually started charging on them. In my previous videos about these time USB batteries, I talked about cables. And that is very important when you look at connecting stuff. If you're running a 12 volt system, you need very, very thick cables. And if you are running a 48 volt system, you don't need as thick cables. You can also see on the side of this inverter here, if we look at the 12 volt, it can do 520 watts. If we go up to 24 volts, it can do 1,040 watts and 1560 watts at 36 volts and 2000 volts at 48 volts. So this inverter is also way more efficient when we get up to a little bit higher voltage than if we stay down. Well, it's very linear actually. 12 volt is 500 and yeah. Um, every time you go up in voltage, you'll be able to drag more power out of it. Mostly just because those 40 amps are uh, the limit. So my plan with this setup is, um, is really um, to put it in my uh, <laughs> not so secret bunker out here. I have a uh, have a bunker down here, as uh, my regular viewers might know, and um, I have run into kind of a um, a piece of uh, yeah, it's getting moldy down there. I wasn't expecting that. 
Usually stuff doesn't get moldy here, but uh, well now that nice warm air gets in there and uh, there's a nice surface to do mold on, well it's getting moldy. So I need to uh, need to do something about that before I start putting down electronic equipment. So uh, yeah, this thing helps a little bit to insulate it. Uh, so it hasn't been getting as bad as it has been. So I have been down there cleaning it. Power system here it hasn't been moved into the to the bunker yet. We need to figure out how to do that, and I'm still working on that <sighs> to get a solution on how to uh, remove the the humidity from the bunker. Playing around with solar and batteries and chargers, I really like that. And I'm going to be combining it with playing around with tiny little servers in the bunker. And at the moment I am not enjoying having to play around with moldy, uh, humid stuff. And yeah, so um, on hold until I figure out that problem. I need the tiniest little dehumidifier in the world. There's only like 2,500 square centimeters of air down there. It can't be that hard to keep dry, but apparently it is. So uh, yeah, I'm struggling with that one. So so if you want to see if I manage that at some point, well, you might want to hit that subscribe thing and uh, also give my video a like, just to be nice, please. Um, other than that, thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.